First question is from Rebel Hammond. What are your thoughts on bear crawls as they seem to be total body, but you don't see them often in the gym? Oh, good old bear crawls. It's not a like strength exercise. It's not a build muscle or burn body fat necessarily exercise. I mean, you burn calories, you will make your body stronger. It's, it's not as easy as it looks, but it's really good at getting the right and left sides of your body to communicate through kind of a fundamental, you know, kind of human pattern, right? Where when, for example, when you're walking, you'll notice that your arms move differently than your legs or mm -hmm. opposing to your legs. They contralateral. Get that contralateral, right? So I used to like to do stuff like this for my clients before we would start the workout and it would help them perform better in exercises that were like split stance or one arm exercises. Mm -hmm. And then there's some core stability uh, component here because you do have to have good core stability to get the arms and legs to communicate properly, you know? That's I think the best way to use it. And I've, <clears throat> I like to kind of take clients through that, um, just like a real slow approach with it to make sure they can even, um, maintain that position, uh, and, and not allow their hips to rotate, especially, and, uh, get that communication started from right to left as, as each intention with the right arm, and the left leg kind of coming together and forward. It takes some, some people, a lot of coordination, uh, that they're not used to, which will really help them in terms of their overall function and athleticism. So uh, there's lots of benefits to it in terms of like uh, crawling patterns are, are pretty much of a fundamental human movement uh, that a lot of people just kind of skip through and being intentional with it has a lot of carryover. But also, I mean, you could use these for conditioning as well, which I've done with athletes. Uh, and it's really difficult after a while to go an extended uh, length of doing these bear crawls too. So I think it's a, a really underrated movement. Um, you did a really good video, Justin, on the Instagram, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. uh, on a fit tip. Was it a fit tip you did? Yeah, I think I did the fit tip. Well, that was a silly one. I did one on YouTube that was a little more. Oh, it wasn't. Um, it wasn't on Instagram depth. where you did the bear crawl. I, thought I did one on Instagram, but it was, it was like a silly one where uh, I'm like growling and shit. So um, <laughs> that's not part yeah. of. It. I mean, to answer the question though, like, why don't we see them in a gym? Well, one, I think they they take up a lot of space, right? To do like a full crawl, like you know, if you're going to go 20 yards, not every gym, and you probably feel kind of silly doing you, that. People feel silly doing it. The other thing is that I think that they're they're used mostly in, for conditioning when I don't think that's where the real value is. I think if you watch the video that Justin does, um, if you learn to move like that versus just doing it as cardio, which that to me, when I see bear crawls done, it's rare. And I definitely tell you, if I see someone doing them proper, I know they, they're either a trainer or they got a good trainer who's teaching them that because it's one of the, it's like seeing a good plank. Yeah. It's like one of those, these, these fundamental movements that you should probably incorporate into your lifestyle, but most people don't even do them properly. And then when you see someone who's doing them, they, you know, they really get it. Either they've been trained or they're a trainer themselves. So I think that's part of why you don't see them in the gym is because I think people look at them and think they're just a conditioning tool. Yeah. And if you're and they're like, well, there's I can just get on the treadmill and run on the treadmill. Yeah. Why would I crawl down the it's, middle of the gym? It's just not a sexy like, you know, I'm not working a specific part of my like exercises like that plank. don't necessarily work a specific part of the body um, or make you really tired and sweat. Often you don't see them in gyms. But and I'm glad you said there's a there's a way to do them. Right. When you do them properly, like you could just get on the floor and go, but you're not really going to gain a lot of the benefits of how to do a bear crawl properly. When you do them right, you're stabilizing your core. You're not allowing your pelvis to, to, yeah. to twist everywhere, and you're staying stable as you're moving. Now you're getting things to communicate, and you're really activating the core um, in, a, in a really effective way. So done right, they're really effective. Done wrong, and it's just a way to well, move. I also think too it's a it's a great progression from like a bird dog, which yeah. bird dogs, you know, for your average person, you look at that like what's the value there? Yeah. Like it just doesn't look like you're going to get a sweat. You're you're really working any kind of strength move, but um, you know that 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 communication right to left and and also the anti rotational uh, focus with that is uh, a lot of the value of what you're receiving. Well, this is why one one of my favorite. Uh, analogies ever given on this podcast was the one that Sal did almost five, six years ago now when he talked about the, you know, amp and speakers, right? The whole CNS thing. And this, 
to me, this is a great example. Like how, what are some basic exercises that I can do to improve my CNS and the, the communication that my, my amp has to my speakers. This is one of the ways for you to invest in that. Like if you want to work on how your CNS communicates to your muscles and improve upon that, doing things like the bird dog or doing the bear crawl are incredible, but doing them with intent is where the value is, not just doing it to burn calories or to sweat. If you go well, into that's what like, it's for. Yeah. yeah, you lose the value there if you do that. But if you actually do it properly, then it can really improve on the way that you your CNS communicates yeah, to your it's muscles. It's no different than taking a hammer and trying to use it on a screw. Like, can you hammer a screw into the wall? You can, but it's not going to be nearly as effective as if you use like a, a drill, right? So use the right tools for the job and then use them properly. And to get the that contralateral communication, to get the right kind of core stability, it's a great exercise to build a lot of muscle and burn a lot of calories. Not really. However, does getting your body to communicate better contralaterally, does activating your core in a way where it's more functional and stable during other exercises, could that improve your ability Absolutely. to build muscle and burn body fat? Yes. And, and I want to say that because I don't have to sell it, right? right? I know people watching are like, oh, build muscle, burn body fat, <sighs> not for me. No, you, you do these things better uh, than you're able to do those exercises that are the big muscle builders and the fat burners uh, much more effectively. And By the way, as, as far as bird dogs, sorry to interrupt, but as far as bird dogs is concerned, you know that was one of my favorite exercises to help people with low back pain? Mm -hmm. If somebody mm -hmm. came to me with low back pain, seven out of ten times, bird dogs would make the pain uh, much better immediately. That's such an effective exercise for that. Well, those both those movements are, I mean, I know you sold it for the fat loss community and the muscle building community. But man, if you're an athlete, that that's a for sure yeah. foundational thing you should be able to do and do well. And that will really translate into whatever sport you're doing, because when you're doing sports, that's what you the, the ability to for your body to communicate from left to right on each side and do that seamlessly is uh, is and, only going to improve your body. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So full control. The first time I learned this was year I was embarrassed. Well, I, I wasn't embarrassed. I, I'm looking back. I'm embarrassed. But back then it was such a great learning experience. I had a physical therapist. She was so good. Her name was Lori, and she was phenomenal at what she did. And she was she would do things that sometimes I had no idea what the value was. And I remember she was training a young athlete, and she had this young athlete stand and do a one arm shoulder press with the right arm. But as the right arm went up, the left knee went up, and it went down. And I remember watching this as a meathead trainer, right? And I thought, what a stupid exercise! You can't press a lot of weight. Like, where's the value in that? And and I asked her afterwards, like, what was the value? And I respected her enough to ask her, so what's the value of that? Because he's not really lifting a lot of weight, not building a lot of muscle. And she said, oh, it's contralateral communication. And I said, well, what does that mean? And she goes, well, do me a favor. She goes, walk down the hall, but, in, but instead of your left arm moving up when your right leg steps forward, move yeah. your right arm with your right leg. Do and the same together. And, yeah. and I was like, kind of oh, awkward. my God. And she goes, now try and walk and run that way. And I couldn't <laughs> do it. She goes, that contralateral movement is so fundamental to performance so what I was training with him was getting that to communicate better because of running and all this other stuff and when we do the other lifts. And I was like, oh, that's absolutely brilliant. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.